Hello everyone and welcome back to the 3D Tinkerer channel. So today we are going to be talking about the new changes and features that we're getting in Blender 2.81. Now, even though it isn't a big update like 2.8, there's still a lot of cool features to uh, take a look at. So we're going to go right into it. So I have a little presentation for us here today. So starting off, we're going to be talking about sculpt and retopology. Um, so there's a few new brushes starting off with the pose brush. So the pose brush poses a model with armature like deformations and the pivot is calculated automatically based off the radius of the brush. Um, so we have a little video here. So you can see here um, using the pose brush, you can kind of see how it auto generates an armature. Now there is no armature on this sculpt right here. Um, it's just doing a bit of math behind the scenes. And as you can see, it's able to uh, just change the pose of the body very like lifelike as that's what I would say. Um, and you could see there's a lot of different things you could do with this. It obviously won't be able to replace an armature because sculpts are still sculpts, but it's a very cool tool. Moving on, we have a, the elastic deform brush. So I have a few videos here. It allows you to grab by scale, grab tri scale, grab scale and do twist operations that preserve volume. Um, and they're all under the elastic deform tool. So the first video here, we can see, I believe this is the um, scale. So you can see this is the mesh being, the sculpt, sorry, being scaled here. Um, then we also have this one is just the grab. You can see it's just like a very, it's called the elastic deform. So it looks like it's elastic. And this last one I believe is just the grab. Um, and you can see they're also using the masking feature that's new also 2.81. So we're gonna be talking about the masking feature later, but very basic stuff, but very, very powerful for the uh, you sculptors out there that use Blender. So moving on, we have the draw sharp brush. Now this is a really cool brush. I see a lot of potential for it. Um, just reading it here, right here, it says similar to the draw brush, but deforms the mesh from the original coordinates. Uh, when the sharper curve preset is set, it allows for more pleasant crease slash cut behavior than the other brushes. And it's useful for creating cloth wrinkles, stylized hair or hard surface edges. So you can see here, this is a really cool tool. So this is like a, a lock of hair. You can see you get that really sharp crease. It, it looks very similar to, you know, stylized hair. Um, by the way, all these videos are taken from, I believe his name is Pablo... I can't remember his last name, but I'll flash it up on the screen here. You should check him out. A lot of these sculpt videos are from his uh, Twitter because uh, I believe he's the actual one who do he's the one who does the development for these tools. So anyways, going back to the sharp brush, um, you can see you can make really hard edges in your sculpt. So this is great for hard surface modeling, stylized hair, like I said, and you can also use it for wrinkles and clothes if you want. Um, it does look a little too sharp for that. I feel like a crease would probably help, but I'm not a sculpting master, so I can't really judge that too much. So uh, moving on, here's the masking. Now the mask um, feature looks very cool. This is, like I said, new to 2.81. Um, so there's a couple different ways you can do it. Um, there is expand and extract. And I believe this one right here is expand. Um, so you can see here, he's basically just coloring almost on the edges. And that black region is the selected part. And you can get a better idea of what you can do with it over here, where this one is the extract, I believe. So he just does a box selection, it seems like, and it extracts that part out. And then if you see here, boom, he just created like sleeves, essentially. Um, I'm not sure what tool he used right there to actually create it. It looked like a solidify modifier of some kind. Um, let me see if I can take a closer look. Um, yeah, he just did a, I, I guess the tool itself, the extract tool creates that geometry. So you can see it said a mask extract there. I don't know if you could see that, but yeah, very cool tool. Looks like it's a, a great tool for making clothing really quickly for characters. So uh, moving on to the next one, we have change, small changes to the sculpt uh, cursor, but I felt like they were important enough to be added. Um, you can see here, it just kind of, it, it bases the, it uses the normals from your sculpt to rotate the, uh, the brush around. So re just reading it off real quick now follows the surface normals and display symmetry, optional preview of edges. Um, so the optional preview of edges is turned on over here and is, it's kind of hard to see because of the white dress of the character, but you can see it adds that outline of all the edges, wherever your, um, wherever your cursor is. So it's, 
it's like a really cool tool that lets you see kind of like where the flow of your um, geometry is going. So very cool. Um, new remesh option. So these two aren't actually shown in the video here, but I'll just read them off. So the quadriflow create a quad mesh with a few poles and edge loops that follow the curvature. Um, it's slow, but a higher quality and final topology. So these are just retopologizing tools, essentially. I think it's just a click and go feature, but I haven't seen it yet in action. Um, we also have voxel remesh, so we can create a mesh with even size, with, sorry, with even face size, and it can be used as an alternative to dynamic topology, and it allows for better performance um, with, with the cost of continuous update, sorry, without the performance cost of continuous updates. Um, there's also, though, this video right here is a easier um, manual retopology re tool. I'm just kind of showing you here. So normally you would just like spam E to make create new vertices and then draw out the faces and snap them to the the uh, sculpt that you were working on. But now you can see it's essentially just a click and drag almost. Um, so you can see it's this little tool right here on the side panel. Um, but yeah, he's it's literally just a click and go pretty much. And this looks great for people that have to do a lot of like manual retopologizing of their sculpts. Um, cause sometimes a sculpt is just too complex. I mean, tools can only take you too far, like really heavy, heavily automized, automized tools. I think that's the word. Um, moving on, we have transform and snapping. Um, so these are smaller ones, but I felt like they were enough to get in here as well. Um, you can now actually move an object's origin point without having to use like the snapping option. Um, so you, it seems like it's pretty much just a click and drag. Um, you can also now mirror over the Y and Z axis. Um, this used to be only supported with the X axis, apparently, something I never really noticed. I guess I was used to the mirror modifier. Um, and you can now snap on the edge center or the middle of the edge. So you can see here I have a picture where there's a new um, edge snapping tool. Um, you can see here it's just under your the regular snapping options. It's these two right here. Um, you can also snap um, perpendicular to an edge. Um, and auto merged vertices now split overlapping faces. Um, there's also a picture for that, but basically if there's an overlapping face, it'll try to split that in half. So you end up with less end guns. Uh, moving on to cycles, there's a few pretty big cycles updates. Um, so now there's the open image denoise node. Um, this is in the compositor. Um, so it require, requires albedo and normal passes, which you can render by enabling noise data passes. And this um, node will help denoise complex objects like grass and produce less splotchy art artifacts. Um, so I have a couple pictures here for you that I pulled from the website. So here's four samples of an outdoor exterior scene um, before the denoise. And after the denoise, you can see, although there are still some blotchy spots, it, it looks really good for only four samples. Uh, just kind of going back and forth here. I also have some bigger ones. So here's a kind of zoomed in image. And then here is with the denoise turned on. So you can see there is like some rather blotchy spots. Um, more specifically, the water, it does reflect, but the rocks look kind of weird and almost like a reptilian skin, I guess. But this is only with four samples. You bump this up a little bit more, you get a really good looking image for pretty low performance cost. So people with lower end computers can, you, you don't really have to commit to something like a render farm or saving up money for more powerful computers. So um, we also now with in cycles, the experimental section of cycles. If you turn on the experimental version, we now have a uh, NVIDIA optics. So it's the implementation of the RTX cards used for cycles ray tracing. So we have a little graph here that I pulled from the uh, patch notes. You can see the blue graphs are an Intel Xeon Gold um, Intel CPU. And the gray bars are just, you know, regular CUDA. It is on, on the same graphics card though, a GTX 20 uh, Ti, but the green ones are with optics. So you see it kind of varies, but some, we get a 50% reduction in um, time in some areas and like a, a nice 25% reduction in others. So you can see the new uh, RTX cards are really given a boost in um, productivity. So if you have a RTX card or plan on buying one, do some blender renders with them. It's really cool. 
Um, some other smaller features in Cycle, so we now have a new white noise detection node, um, new volume info node, um, it gives color, density, and temperature attributes of the smoke domains. We have a new vertex color node that gives access to vertex colors. Um, adaptive subdivision um, behaves a little bit better, now it avoids cracks between edges. Apparently you saw this with like really low res meshes before, and or sorry, after you put adaptive subdivision on them. Um, reduced shadow terminator artifacts for bump mappings with the fuse B BSDFs. Um, basically this means that the shadows look less sharp in some scenarios when using bump maps and diffuse shaders. Um, the viewport now supports the use of HDRI lighting instead of just scene lighting. Um, I, I wasn't, I'm not 100% sure on which, what this meant. Um, I'm guessing that it means you have the option to just use a set HDRI instead of having to use the scene lighting. So when you swap to like rendered view and cycles, you can just use a consistent HDRI. Um, so it's easier to model your objects with a similar background essentially. So it's easier to streamline. Um, we also have some EV changes. So it seemed, I believe they said that the soft shadows has been completely overhauled. So there is now a checkbox that says um, use soft shadows option in the render window. Um, basically soft shadows are better in EV. Um, transparency handling has been reworked and now supports the same BSDF combination as cycles. So easier transparency with your nodes, you can streamline the process a bit better. Um, especially if you're like going back and forth between EV and cycles, just trying to work it out in EV then finish it in cycles. Um, bump maps now have closer result to cycles, so that's cool. Um, and volumetric effects now compute faster on modern GPUs, and this is just for EV, I believe. Um, there's also some viewport changes. Um, so rendering shading mode options to use HDRI lighting um, instead of scene lighting in world works now for both EV and cycles. So we mentioned this earlier, there's just a setting for it. Um, look dev has now been called material view, so it's not confusing why you have to <laughs> click on something called look dev to see your materials. Um, HDR studio lighting can strength can now be controlled, so going back to the HDRI lighting. Um, each viewport can have its own set of visible collections, so it seems like this would be really useful for animation rigs. You can basically turn off the view in different collections. Uh, work workbench matte caps can now be affected by material texture or random color, while specular will not. I haven't tinkered too much with matte caps, but I'm sure sculpting people would appreciate that. Uh, image objects can now be set to display in side view only. <laughs> I wrote thank god there because it's for the few people that use images as references while modeling, not on like a separate monitor, but in Blender as a backdrop, you can now set it to only be a side view. You don't have to just have an object floating out in the space for whatever reason. Um, we have a little side quest here, library overrides. Now, I was a bit confused with these. I'll just read it off here. So with library overrides, there's a new system designed to replace and supersede proxies. Um, most types of um, lined data blocks can be overridden, and the properties of those overrides can then be edited. What I believe this is, for you people who understand what I'm talking about, is you can, I believe this has to do with the um, saving data blocks. So like... If you had a material without an object before you had to hit a little button to keep it, I think that's what this is referring to. There's a new system for it. I could be wrong, so I'm going to stop talking about it, but just know that they changed library overrides. Um, this is also useful for multiple animations in one file, I believe. Uh, moving on to the user interfaces. Um, there is a brand new file browser, um, and there's also new ways to interact with the outline, so I'll just let this video run. but. As you can see here on the left, we have previews. Now, I'm not sure if how these are generated because you can obviously see that there's a preview of these objects from blend files. So I'm guessing this is just automatic, maybe from a camera point of view. I'm not 100% sure. We can also see over here on the right, there's a bunch of different ways now to um, move around uh, your collections. There's like collapsing and box selections and all sorts of new things. Um, so you might want to check out the patch notes if you want the complete list, but I'm not going to go over all of them. 
yeah, this video goes on for a little bit longer, but we're just going to skip it for now. Just know there's new ways to interact with the outline. Um, UI continued, so there's now a batch rename for objects. So if you press Control and hit F2, you can batch rename objects. Um, there's also an updated key mat for new UI features. This one took up a decent size of my pay, my uh, my page when I was looking at it on the website. So just Google uh, UI 2.81 if you really want to know them. But nothing major in terms of um, modeling shortcuts, I believe. So we have also some grease pencil updates. So there's many UI updates. Uh, there's also a new merge by distance operator for your, um, I believe it's a vector for vector brushes. That's what all the brushes are, I believe, the, the grease pencils. Um, there's better snapping and a new ISO grid option. Uh, there's improved brush endings, so they look a little less jagged. They kind of end more like a pen brush would. would. Um, there's also new brushes and presets, which you can see on the right here, like airbrush, ink pen, so just a lot more um, grease pencil options for out there for the 2D artists. Um, and last but not least, we also have a few more smaller features that I just wanted to mention. Um, there's now WebM video support. So if you prefer rendering it out in that format, you can do that now. Um, there is RG, that's supposed to say RGB, but RGP. Um, there's now an RGB node instead of just RGBA, which is red, green, blue, alpha. So you don't have to render an alpha layer anymore. So that hopefully can save people some uh, space depending on what you're actually rendering out to. Um, I'm not sure how that was done with JPEG because I'm pretty sure JPEG doesn't even have an alpha layer. So I'm not sure if, I'm not sure how this will really affect size. But anyways, hopefully it's faster. And now video sequence the video sequencer, sorry, has a new option to fill cache in the background. I believe that's in the settings that you have to turn on, but instead of having to play through the entire clip to uh, get it to um, fill in the frames, you can have it just kind of do that in the background over time. So, But that is it. Thanks for watching, everyone. Um, as of today, I currently have 4,500 subscribers on my channel, which is super cool. Um, I really appreciate everyone for following and leaving nice comments behind. I try to like all the ones that uh, are just super friendly. Um, and hopefully I have another video on the works. I have the footage for it. I tease it a bit, but there's a I built a home server that is, in my opinion, very cool. So hopefully I can make a video on that soon. It has a media server, a Minecraft server, a few Docker containers, a lot of cool stuff. So hopefully I can share that with you guys soon. I've just been a little busy. So um, hopefully when I get more breaks in the future, like summer break, winter break, I can make some more videos. But uh, thanks for watching, everyone. If you like the video, you know what to do. And... Have a good one.